Would you like to hear the name of the new web browser in Windows 10? OK, let's run the video. Over the years, Internet Explorer allowed me to stay connected with friends and family around the world. Ah, Internet Explorer, the browser you use to download other browsers. Or at least that's what it used to be until Microsoft finally decided to retire Internet Explorer in mid-2022. Don't worry though, Microsoft has a replacement for Internet Explorer called Edge, and it's able to download Google Chrome even faster. In fact, it's able to download it even faster than Chrome would be able to download it, given that it's objectively faster. According to Microsoft, Edge is 112% faster than Chrome, but who knows what cherry-picked data they're using. Something that is surprising though is that Edge is actually faster in real-world testing as well. This is what many blogs have been claiming for quite some time now, and through my personal testing, it does appear to be true. On BrowserBench, I was able to get a score of 270 using Edge, while I only got a score of 251 using Chrome. This wasn't just a fluke either. Test after test, Edge consistently scored about 20 points better than Chrome. Edge is not just snappier than Chrome either, it's also more efficient. With 60 tabs open, Chrome used up 3.7 gigabytes of memory, while Edge only used up 2.9 gigabytes. This will be quite noticeable for all of you who regularly have dozens of tabs open. I know you're watching. Alright, so Edge might be marginally faster and more efficient than other browsers, but speed isn't the only factor when it comes to choosing a browser. There are several other factors that you might consider, such as which one is more socially acceptable. I'm just kidding, of course you don't do that, but what you might consider is the default search engine. Now, technically, the default search engine on Edge is Bing, but Microsoft isn't hell-bent on getting you to actually use Bing. In fact, you can switch to Google within literally 10 seconds. But what about the hundreds of thousands of extensions that are available on the Chrome Web Store? Surely, Microsoft can't compete with that, right? Well, they don't have to because they simply let you use the Chrome Web Store. The new version of Edge is based on Chromium, meaning that you can add any Chrome extension to Edge. You can also add Microsoft extensions to Edge. Not that Microsoft's catalog is anything to brag about, but you do have that as well, which simply gives you even more options. On top of all this, Edge also has awesome integration with Microsoft Office and Outlook for obvious reasons. Edge also comes with a lot of quirks that many people really like, such as the ability to arrange your tabs vertically and the sidebar on the side of the screen. So really, you get the best of both the Google world and the Microsoft world. This is really not that surprising, given that Edge is really just a faster implementation of Chrome with some Microsoft aspects thrown in here and there. But despite this, Edge is getting destroyed in terms of market share. Chrome's market share stands at a dominating 60%, while Edge's market share isn't even able to cross 5%. So why does no one want Edge despite it being equivalent to Chrome if not better. One of the main reasons that people avoid Edge like the plague is because of Internet Explorer. At one point in history, Internet Explorer was actually the most popular browser on the planet, but not because it was good, but because it was forced. You see, before Internet Explorer, people were perfectly happy using the World Wide Web, Lynx, and of course, Netscape. But in 1995, Microsoft decided that they wanted a piece of the internet pie as well, so they came out with Internet Explorer. And knowing Microsoft, they didn't want to leave the adoption of Internet Explorer up to chance, so they bundled Internet Explorer in with Windows, and just as they hoped, new PC users tended to use the default browser, Internet Explorer, and this led to the browser becoming the dominant browser. But Microsoft had gotten one thing wrong. Just because Internet Explorer was the most popular did not mean that it was actually popular amongst people. At best, people had a neutral opinion on the browser, while enthusiasts hated it. This wasn't to say that Internet Explorer was terrible. It got the job done fine, but at the same time, it wasn't anything notable either. What really triggered enthusiasts was the fact that Microsoft forced Internet Explorer while there were several other great options. And it wasn't just enthusiasts that were triggered either. 
Regulators were also triggered. Microsoft was literally blocking computer manufacturers from putting any other web browser on the desktop. And this was after Microsoft agreed that they would not bundle IE in with Windows. As you would guess, regulators did not take this violation lightly, and this issue would be escalated up to the Supreme Court. During the worst of it, Microsoft was actually being ordered to split into two different companies. But luckily for Microsoft, this order was cancelled at the last second, because the judge issuing the order had broken protocol by talking to the press. So ironically, it was the press that saved Microsoft at the Supreme Court, but they by no means helped Microsoft in the public court. By the early 2000s, the general public was well aware of how Microsoft had abused their power with IE, and they resented Microsoft for it. For many, Microsoft was the embodiment of everything that was wrong with a capitalistic society. So they started leaving in droves, and they started supporting an open source project, Mozilla Firefox. For many years, Firefox was the go-to browser not just for enthusiasts, but for everyone. By 2010, Firefox had 33% market share, while IE had 50% market share. If Firefox had a few more years, they would have overtaken IE and it became the most popular browser in the world by far. But Sundar Pichai and Google had a different plan. They had seen quite a bit of success within the search and email space, and now they wanted to challenge the likes of Microsoft and Apple with Google Chrome. While Firefox was giving Microsoft a run for their money, they had by no means lost the game quite yet. All of the F Microsofters had already left, so the people that were left were simply looking for a functional browser, and IE was more than capable of that. So all Microsoft had to do was keep IE functional, but they couldn't even do that. At first glance, this might be surprising. Why was a multi-hundred billion dollar company not able to keep up with a browser? A literal open source community was able to do that. Well, the answer is not a lack of resources. The answer is hubris and arrogance. You see, Microsoft had never played by the rules. They were the ones that set the rules. And everyone else had to follow Microsoft's rules whether they wanted to or not, because Microsoft had the users. Microsoft approached IE with this same attitude. They didn't give a crap about global web standards or developers or even putting out consistent updates. Microsoft was only updating IE once every few years. While developers were willing to put up with this BS when IE had 80 to 90% market share, they stopped catering to Microsoft's needs as Firefox and Chrome started making names for themselves. Unlike IE, Chrome and Firefox were built for developers by developers. Google figured that to get end users to switch, they first needed to get developers to switch and make websites that ran great on their browser. Fortunately for Google, this wasn't that hard to do given that Microsoft was in hibernation. The results of this weren't immediately clear, but about five years after the launch of Chrome in the early to mid 2010s, the general public started to notice. More and more websites started to look wonky on IE. People also started to notice that their friends who used Chrome experienced less lag, fewer crashes, and simply had an overall smoother experience. But IE's problems stretched much further than just being slow or displaying websites poorly. Remember how computer viruses were an actual concern 10 to 20 years ago? Well, one of the main reasons for that is actually Internet Explorer. You see, Microsoft allowed developers to write website code in the international standard, which is JavaScript or Visual Basic Script. The reasoning for this was that VBScript could allow developers to accomplish more advanced tasks as they would have greater access to the user's PC. But this also meant that it was way easier to infect computers with viruses. Let's just say that this security issue was so bad that Microsoft has since put out tutorials on how to disable VBScript execution. So not only was IE slower and wonky, it was a serious security threat. I mean, it's almost as if Microsoft was actively encouraging people to leave IE, and that's exactly what they did. Between 2009 and 2015, IE's market share would plummet from 65% down to 15%. Clearly, Microsoft's hibernation strategy was no longer working, and they would finally decide to do something with the launch of Microsoft Edge. Microsoft initially launched Edge alongside Windows 10 back in 2015. But while Edge had a much more modern look than IE, not much had really changed. Behind the scenes, 
Microsoft was making all of the same mistakes that they were making with IE. For example, Edge was built on Microsoft's proprietary browser engine, Edge HTML, and their Chakra JavaScript engine. While these sound fancy, the reality was that Edge still did not support even basic open media standards such as WebM and Opus. So Edge was really just the same crappy Internet Explorer but with a facelift. We should also mention that Microsoft was still using their classic monopolistic practices with Edge as it came with Windows 10 and now Windows 11 as well. But by this point, people had become numb to Microsoft's games. Downloading a new browser using Microsoft's default browser became a natural part of buying a new computer. Nobody even bothered checking out if Edge was actually good or not. In fact, Edge's market share was a laughable 2%. But no worries, and it's not like any of these people missed out on anything, because Edge still sucked. This didn't remain the case forever though, as Satya Nadella, the new CEO, would eventually come around to addressing Edge. Unlike his predecessors, Satya did not have the pompous viewpoint that Microsoft was the only and the best choice for consumers. Instead, he acknowledged their shortcomings and embraced their competitors. For example, instead of endlessly pursuing the Windows Phone, he chose to embrace iOS and Android by launching Microsoft Office on these platforms. He would carry over this same mindset when it came to addressing the browser space. Instead of trying to outshine Chrome by developing their own advanced browser from scratch, he chose to embrace Chrome. He acknowledged that Chrome had won over the users and the developers. So it was much smarter to build off of Chrome's success and simply add a Windows pin to it. And that's exactly what happened. At the end of 2018, Microsoft announced that they would be switching Edge to Chromium. And at the beginning of 2020, Microsoft would launch the new Edge. Since then, Edge has simply become more and more integrated with Chrome, but at the same time, it has also become more and more unique. For example, they embraced the Chrome Web Store, but at the same time, they also addressed Chrome's atrocious RAM usage. Similarly, they let you use Google as your default search engine, but at the same time, you have the full power of Microsoft's Office Suite, which, let's be honest, is way better than Google's offerings. Microsoft Edge is no longer the lock into the Microsoft ecosystem that it once used to be. But despite all this, no one wants to switch, primarily because of their negative opinion on IE and the original Edge. With that being said though, we can't expect these types of switches to happen overnight. Enthusiasts are starting to notice, and as Google becomes the one that's hibernating, we may just see a non-monopolistic browser space. Would you be willing to switch to Edge? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you're glad that Chrome may finally see some competition. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community, suggest future video ideas, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.